Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia and today I want to talk about some books that I read because you recommended them to me. This is actually a follow-up to a video I did in November of 2018, so that's nearly two years ago, which was titled Weirdly Specific Recommendation Requests. And in that video I asked you for recommendations for books and those recommendation requests were, as the title said, weirdly specific. I will link to that video in the description box so I don't have to give you a complete summary of it. Um, go and check it out if you like. After I posted that video I got a lot of recommendations in the comments for my specific requests. A lot of recommendations. And what I did then was compile them into a long list and then when I was out and about book shopping I would keep an eye out for the books that you recommended. So today I want to talk about some of those books that I read based on your recommendations. One of my requests was for a pre-19th century historical detective fiction. And for that brief, I got so many recommendations for the Mistress of the Art of Death series by Ariana Franklin. And I read those books earlier this year. They are crime fiction, as in detective mystery stories, that are set in 12th century England. And the main character is a young woman who is a medical doctor trained in the medical school of Salerno, which did actually admit women in the 12th century. And she is sent by the King of Sicily to England to solve some mysteries for King Henry II. I read the first one, which deals with a series of child murders, and I really loved this series. I enjoyed it so much. It is a typical detective story, you know, there's like clues and red herrings, there's quite gruesome descriptions, there's a lot of violence in them, but set in this, you know, almost magical 12th century historical setting. I read the first one and then I read the other three in the series and I enjoyed them to varying degrees, um, but everyone who said that these books are going to be right up my street, were 100% right. So thank you for that recommendation. I really loved these books. Unfortunately, the author passed away before she could continue the series, so it does end a little bit open-ended, but I'm still hoping that I think her daughter is working on continuing with those books. So if that series continues, I will definitely pick up more of these books. Mistress of the Art of Death, I can recommend to you if you haven't read them and if you are also interested in some historical detective fiction that is set before the 19th century. Another one of my prompts was uh, for a book that centers around university life, ideally around PhD life, just so I don't feel quite so alone in what I do day in, day out. And um, one recommendation that I got several times was Donna Tartt's The Secret History. Now this was a book I didn't really know what it was about other than it was set in a university and I managed to find a copy in a charity shop like a year ago, then promptly lost the entire shopping bag with that book and others that were in that bag and then found that again a few weeks ago. So I, you know, it's been hidden away in my house for a year but now I finally got to read it and Again, you know me too well, I loved The Secret History. This is a novel. It's hard to sort of pinpoint the genre. Um, it's not a crime mystery novel, even though a crime is committed. I, it's not about your average university experience. Um, this was published, I believe, in the 90s, I want to say, or in the 80s. It feels like it's set in the 80s, and um, it's centers around a group of friends at this tiny elite American university. And right on the very first page, this is not a spoiler, right on the very first page, this group of friends murders one among them. And then the rest of the book is leading up to that killing, why it happened, how it happened, the aftermath of it. And this is a book that I'm kind of conflicted about. You know, I don't like the expression of a guilty pleasure, but this probably comes as close to a guilty pleasure as a book can be. It is very, very blatantly kind of romanticizing and glorifying the elite college experience. It also has one of my pet peeve tropes. One of the things that I really dislike about a book, 
when it has one, one female character that matters. And this is one of those books, there's exactly one one female character that matters. And I can't even say that her characterization is particularly amazing. And yet, I it was like a car crash, I could not look away. It, it It's a big book, this, right? It's like 600 pages or something like that. And I had to read it, like, very quickly. I could not put it down. It was the sort of book that kept me up at night. It was the sort of book that kept me in bed in the morning. I just... I, it, it drew me right in. And that's why, almost against my better judgment, I am giving this book the five stars. It is one of my reading highlights of the year. I hope any of this made any sense. Please let me know if you are also similarly conflicted about Donna Tartt's The Secret History. I loved the writing style of it. I loved how unique it was as a story. I loved the pretentiousness of it. You know, there's a lot of sort of ancient Greek quoted and uh, things that I have absolutely no connection to personally. It is really, really incredibly pretentious as a book, but I loved it. Maybe because of these aspects, maybe despite of them, but I don't care. Um, I am definitely going to pick up... I think Donald Tart has written two other novels, I want to say, so I think I'm probably going to pick those up as well, because this, this was just such an interesting, fascinating read that had me absolutely spellbound. So again, thank you for recommending The Secret History to me. One of my other prompts was for a non-fantasy medieval setting, ideally non-fantasy castle setting. This prompt was inspired by me being literally surrounded by medieval castles. There were so many of them. You know, if you go out to my house and you drive half an hour in any direction, you're gonna end up at a castle. There's quite a lot of castles around in North Wales and they are all stunning in their own way. And every time I go and visit a castle here, I feel like, what a setting would this be for a novel? So the novel that I got recommended for that one, um, a lot of the time was Ken Follett's Pillars of the Earth. And this isn't a castle setting, but it is about a cathedral building. And I think as far as medieval buildings go, Cathedrals and castles are both similarly impressive and they both are similarly awe-inspiring. So I was fine with that as a replacement for the castle in, in the setting. Um, I read this with my friend Andrea from Infinite Text and we we hosted a group read-along of that last year. And that was such a fun experience. I really got a lot out of this novel. Again, summarizing the plot kind of doesn't really work because if I say it's about the building of a cathedral, it kind of glosses over this huge network of plots and characters and interactions that go on in the story. Really, it's kind of a family saga that revolves around a cathedral. It was a very epic read. There were a lot of things I didn't like about the Pillars of the Earth, including the female characters and generally there was a kind of constant objectification and sexualization of the women in the book that I found very grating. But overall, again I thank you for the recommendation, uh, it, it hit exactly that right spot for a non-fantasy medieval setting that is centered around a massive impressive building. Another recommendation that I was asking for was for a book that is a near-future climate dystopia. And uh, many of you recommended the book and series Life As We Knew It by Susan Beth Pfeffer. Again, you are like right on the spot with this one. It was slightly, slightly beside the brief because um, it wasn't about, I guess, climate change as we consider it now. You know, man-made, um, changing, rapidly changing climate and the effects that that's going to have. Uh, the natural disasters in this book come from the single astronomical event of a meteor hitting the moon, knocking it closer to Earth. So that sets off this entire series of books. The first book, Life As We Knew It, is a, a diary style novel and it is the diary of a teenage girl going through these horrific end-of-world dystopian apocalyptic events. 
So as she barricades herself in her home with her family, trying to survive this supernatural winter, she writes her diary. And I thought it was so amazingly well done um, to have this combination of the world literally ending and a teenage girl writing about the things that a teenage girl writes about. Um, it was a really gripping read, even though it is a diary novel. And um, I genuinely loved this book. After I finished Life As We Knew It, I immediately bought the other two in this series. I think it's a series of four, but I only read three of them. And I kind of wish I hadn't done that. And that was because the third book of the series was so disappointing that I just, it, it put me off the entire series in a way, which is a shame because the first book really was stunning and, and hit exactly the sort of brief that I wanted, which was a kind of small world apocalyptic event. And it is a very small world. You know, this girl is literally stuck in her house with her family, trying to survive on canned foods. Really, really good. I enjoyed that. If you enjoy a good YA dystopia, or what this is, a good YA post-apocalyptic novel, then check out the first book and try not to be too disappointed with the rest of the series. One of the briefs that I set was for a historical novel that was set in prehistory or ancient times. And the most recommended book for that was The Clan of the Cave Bear by... I have not written down the author name. Jean Owl. The Clown of the Cave Bear by Jean Owl. And um, again, I can see why a lot of you recommended that because it is a historical novel set in prehistoric times. This one follows a young human, I think modern human, but I'm not an evolution, evolution, ne, ne, um, I'm not a scientist. So uh, I, I think she's a modern human who gets adopted into a clan of Neanderthals. And um, it, it's a really, weird book because your expectations of what kind of development a human goes through is completely different for Neanderthals. I don't know how authentic this book is. It's It read like it was probably really well researched, but honestly I don't really care about how authentic the Neanderthal biology in this book are. That's not what the story was about really. It was about a girl finding her place um, among a group of people that are completely different to her. This book was really cheesy, like... How annoying. My camera battery died. This is now being recorded two hours after the bit you just saw. I'm pretty sure the framing isn't the same. I'm pretty sure my makeup isn't the same. I can't remember what I was talking about before my camera battery died. Uh, this is the first time I think that's happened, so I guess I'm a real YouTuber now. I think I was talking about the Clan of the Cave Bear series. Um, I liked it, I liked the setup, I liked the setting, um, but I thought the plot was a little bit cheesy. I wasn't that into the characters. Uh, I'm glad I read it, but I won't be continuing with the series. Still really interesting to read a book that is set in prehistoric times. For the same prompt, I also got recommendations for Circe by Madeline Miller. Let me remind you again that the prompt was historical novels set in ancient or prehistoric times. I really liked Circe, okay? I really enjoyed it. I made a separate review video about that, which I'll link in the description box. I liked Circe, but it is not a historical novel set in in, in ancient times. Um, Circe is very clearly a piece of fantasy fiction. Uh, it, it's about gods and goddesses and witchcraft and um, you know, the Greek myths that are kind of mashed up together to make the life story of the witch goddess Circe. So as, as much as I enjoyed the book, I feel like that one is missing the brief a little bit because it is not historical fiction. Other than that, love the book. Again, if you want to hear my opinion about it, uh, check out the review video that I did for that. And finally, one book that I was recommended for the university setting prompt. And that, I thought, was an interesting recommendation because, again, I don't think it quite hit the brief, but I was recommended Tara Westover's memoir called Educated about that. Um, this memoir made a bit of a splash when it was released a few years ago because it is uh, written by a woman who um, grew up in a 
very separatist, fundamentalist, rural American home where she was homeschooled but not very well and then she went on to um, to get a university degree and in fact she then went on to get a PhD from Oxford or Cambridge, I can't remember, I think Oxford. So I can see why this was recommended to me um, but it didn't really deal with the sort of student life for most of the book. It was also a memoir rather than a novel and while I can appreciate that it is a good memoir, it wasn't really for me because I just don't really like that particular style of memoir, autobiography. I found the prose a little bit too kind of try-hard evocative, if you know what I mean. I thought that it was an absolutely extraordinary story of this woman with her very unique background and her very unique path through life. But it is the sort of book that I think I would have rather seen as a documentary rather than read as a book. But anyway, those were the six books that I read uh, based on your recommendations that I got as comments under my weirdly specific recommendation request video. Thank you to everyone who recommended a book. The list is still ongoing by the way, so I am still going to read more books that you recommended to me and there will be more follow-up videos to that particular video. Uh, there are loads of books on the list that sound super interesting that I can't wait to get to. And also I have, in the two years since I filmed that last video, I have been keeping a list of more weirdly specific recommendation requests. So I've got another video planned, which I might record in the next week or two, that is going to ask you for some more weirdly specific recommendation requests. I think this is such a fun way to get to books that I probably wouldn't have picked up otherwise. And um, I know that people who watch my videos have an idea of my reading taste, so I think um, you are the, the perfect readers to recommend me books and um, thank you for that and watch this space for some more weirdly specific recommendation requests. Thank you for watching. Bye!